Hi guys, it's Josh Lloyd here for your NBA DraftKings first look. For Wednesday, there are 12 games on. There is a lot for me to talk about. Let's talk about it now. The Warriors are going to Washington to take on the Wizards. No Juan Toscano Anderson, no Eric Paschal, no James Wiseman for Golden State. Kelly Oubre will be back, but probably coming off the bench. So at center, come on Looney. 3,800 for Loons, who's playing a lot more minutes than we've really ever seen from him. And it's resulting in some okay performances. Do I think that he is a guaranteed must-roster guy? No, but 20-plus points in three of the last four games at under 4,000. It's not a bad way to fill in your hole. With the Wizards, they are without Rui Hachimura. Now, last game, they inexplicably started Hull Neto, and Neto put up a robust 18 points. But at 3,300, maybe we consider him. I don't find it exciting at all. I do find Russell Westbrook at 10,900 pretty bloody good in that scenario, and Davis Bertans at 4,300 would be someone I'd be much rather doing considering than Hull Neto. Steph's at 10-5 because he's Steph and because he's been unbelievably good. Curry is averaging 50, sorry, 62 over the last five. 62. Do I think at some point there's going to be a call-off? Of course, absolutely, it has to be. But am I willing to bank on that? Not at this stage. I wouldn't want to use Ubre. I wouldn't want to trust Scott Brooks and Dan Gafford because Brooks, you know, he's dicking around with three centers again. But 3,900 for Gaff, he's, you know, giving us... Pretty good numbers, 21, 26, 34, 19, 22 in the last five games, despite heading over 18 minutes once. If it gets to over 20 minutes, he smashes this number, and even in 18 minutes, he probably still beats it. So I think that's why there is some value there in Gafford. Uh, Brad Beals at 94, looks all right, but I wouldn't say it's the best one out there. Well, Damian Lee had a strong performance last game, 23 points, but I don't really trust that he's going to get those 32 minutes again, unfortunately, for uh, Lee and the Curry family. Let's go on to the next one, the Chicago Bulls. They are taking on the Cleveland Cavaliers. No Zach Levine again for Chicago, while Larry Nance is off the injury report for Cleveland. So how they work Nance in with Love and Allen and Hartenstein and Wade remains to be seen. Last game that they all played, Wade was out and Hartenstein was in the rotation. So let's see if they do that again. Garrett Temple will get another start for Chicago almost assuredly. He's at 3,300. Now his last game had 28 points. He's also averaging 12 over the last five, but that's just in 19 minutes. So I don't mind him at that price. Um, Larry Markin at 4,000. Yeah, look, cool. If you're into it, no worries. I'm not. And then 38 for Daniel Tice. Tice has been starting. The production's been a little underwhelming. I don't think it's been horrendous. But, you know, 23 or 29 or 26, look, they're all right. But under 20, it's rough. But he is at least a value option given he is starting. Kobe White at 56, love that one for Kobe. He is scoring a lot. Actually, let's try again. He's shooting a lot. They're not all going in, but he is putting up enough numbers for that to be useful. Garland's at 6,800, and I love what Garland's doing, and I don't expect Kobe White to be able to slow him down. Sexton at 74 looks pretty solid to me as well, as does big Nikola Vucevic. But the problem with Vooch is he's up to 9,900, and that takes a lot of the value away. No Thad for me, no Jared Allen, no Kevin Love, no Larry Nance, no Isaac Okoro. Don't really think they're going to be worth the, uh, the effort. The Oklahoma City Thunder taking on the Indiana Pacers in this one. The Pacers will have no Sabonis, no Turner, and then Goga Badadze, Doug McDermott, and Jeremy Lamb are all questionable. Lou Dort is questionable for the Thunder. Um, of course, if Goga plays at 4,200, he's one of the best players on the board. And you know, I think that's all pretty obvious. Tony Bradley at 41 is not a bad cash play with limited upside over for OKC. Well, Malcolm Brogdon, he's just all over the shop with consistency. So it is hard to trust him in anything more than GPP type scenarios. Levert, last couple have been a bit down, just 26 in his last game there. Well, Justin Holiday is now coming off the bench, so really hard to get excited. I think we look at Darius Baisley if Lou Dort is out. 6,200 for Bays. He's averaging 33 over the last three, but it does help when Dort is out. As for Dorty, he is up at 7,000 bucks. Now, I... I know how I feel, and that is not confident in using Dort. I don't feel good about using Dort at 7,000, and I wouldn't. Now, his recent games have been excellent, absolutely ridiculous, averaging 50 over his last three, but he's shooting like 59% from three during that time. And I, for one, don't believe that Lou Dort is a 56% three-point shooter. You can have your own opinions, but I don't believe that's the case. So that would make it hard for me to use that much money on him. The Thunder rotation remains a mess. And I guess you could look at O'Shea Brissett if he does start in the absence of Lamb and McDermott and uh, Sabonis. The next game we take a look at, 
Philadelphia and Phoenix in Philadelphia. No spread or total out at this point. Both Tobias Harris and Ben Simmons remain listed as questionable. Abdul Nadir is sidelined still for the Suns. Toby Harris is at 7,600, which if he does play, I actually think it's a pretty good price given how he's been going. Well, Embiid at 10-6, I think that's going to be strong now. Aiden did pretty well last time against Embiid. He is at 6,600. I love that he's under 7,000. His recent performances have been pretty strong, DeAndre, averaging 37 over the last five. I wouldn't say it's the best play out there, but it's pretty strong. And I do like 7,700 for Chris Paul, who had a really solid bounce back with 54 points in the last game. Bridges at 47 gives me some upside. He had 30 points in the last one, and he can still be better than that. While the George Hill, Shake Milton, Seth Curry, Matisse Thibault, Ferky from Turkey combination makes it really hard to invest in any of those guys. You could have a look at Thibault, and you could have a look at Korkmaz if Simmons and Harris do happen to be out. Next up, Brooklyn taking on the Toronto Raptors. All of the Raptors tank commanders are listed or not listed on the injury report. So Lowry, Van Vliet, Siakam, Ananobi, they should all be back. And I don't know what the hell they do with their lineup. Do they bench Gary Trent to start Birch slash Boucher? Do they start Siakam at center again? Like who comes off the bench here? The Nets are going to be without James Harden, probably without Kevin Durant, maybe without Nick Claxton as well. Claxo's at 37. If he does play, I like it, but I don't expect him to play. Also, I don't expect uh, Blake Griffin to play because it is a back-to-back. So there is an opportunity there. And if all those guys are out, then DeAndre Jordan and Alizé Johnson are going to be the options for us. Uh, Jordan's at 4,000, which I like a lot. And then you've got Alizé, who can put up big numbers in limited minutes when he does play. Is he even listed? On uh, Yeah, there he is. At, uh, oh, oh, of course. Sorry, sorry, DraftKings. I forgot. Alizé Johnson, noted small forward. He's at 3,200. So there is some value there in him. If Kyrie plays, which I expect him to play at 9,900, I think that would be pretty strong. While Siakam at 87, I just don't trust any Raptors as to how much they're going to play and to what they're going to do. Just no no trust whatsoever in those sort of guys. Uh, Ananobi at 68, Siakam at 87, Van Vliet probably limited at 8,200, Lowry at 77. I just don't trust any of it, nor Gary Trent at 6,000, nor Birch, no Bush, uh, Boucher. There are just too many balls flying around in the air. And I definitely don't want Malachi Flynn at 6,300. Just what Nurse can do there can just completely screw, screw lineups. And I think I'd be avoiding most of those Raptors players. The Utah Jazz, they take on the Houston Rockets. There is no uh, Donovan Mitchell, of course, for Utah. While the Rockets are still there without all their guards, Sterling Brown, Daniel House, Eric Gordon, they're all still out. Gobert is at 8,000. I think he'll have a pretty strong uh, performance up against the crucifix Christian Wood. While Jordy Clarkson at 66 is probably verging on being a little bit too high, but without Mitchell, the usage can go up. Conley's at 68, which I do like. Again, with no Mitchell, it does help Conley's value. And then Wood's at 85, which is too high for me, Christian Wood. Bogdanovich at 59, maybe, but I'm not super in on it. And John Wall's just going to shoot as many times as he can, and that's not always going to go well. I'm not into that. I'm not really into a Linux at 69, and I'm not into Kevin Porter at 6,800. Uh, the pricing is probably too high on a bunch of guys there. For the Rockets, Atlanta. Next game, back-to-back here for Atlanta. Back-to-back for New York as well. They take on each other here in New York. The Knicks are one-and-a-half point favorites. The total is 218. Nerlens Noel's at 4,200. I don't mind that one for Noel. I'd say the upside is relatively limited, but he's got a safe-ish floor. While Alec Burks has missed the last couple, we, we don't know whether he will play at this stage. Taj Gibson at 3,800 makes sense. I wouldn't use him in the same lineup that I use Noel, but he can be a 23, 24-point guy easily. While Julius Randle at 10-2, this guy's just dropping big game after big game, and I love it. Love the 10-2 for him. Lou Williams went off on Tuesday. Now, well, whether he can do that again is up in the air, but at 4,500, he's at least an option with all the injuries, and then Trey Young's at 9,200. The only reason I'd probably be a bit cautious of using Trey is it's the back-to-back, and it is um, a, de- a defensive matchup against the New York Knicks. Kevin Hurd is at 5,800. I think there is value in using him there, while Bogdanovich up at 78 just feels way too high, and probably not one that I'd want to partake in. Detroit, they are taking on the Dallas Mavericks. Their tank commanders are back. Corey Joseph, Jeremy Grant... Uh, Mason Plumley, they're all off the injury report, but Killian Hayes is on it. He will be sit out, first game of a back-to-back, and Dennis Smith is uh, out as well. Oh, doubtful, sorry for Smitty. Jalen Brunson's at 4,400. At least an upside sort of play there, while uh, big Alfie Stewart, 5,600 for Isaiah. Now, Stewart's averaging 47 points over his last three, some with Mason, some without. Now, Plumley's going to probably come back in and really limit Stewart's upside, but... 
At 5,600, I, I don't hate it at all. And I actually like Corey Joseph at 5,000, which is pretty tough to say, but I do like him there given the absence of Hayes and Smith. Doncic at 10 8 should get that comfortably, I'd say. Um, Joshy Jackson at 54 also should get that relatively comfortably. Uh, noted power forward, Josh Jackson, of course. Uh, imagine having Josh Jackson as a power forward and Alizé Johnson as a small forward. There you go. Porzingis at 9,000 is too high. Jeremy Grant at 68 is probably too high as well. Mason Plumley at 48 is too high. 55 for the depressed penis, Sadiq Bay. I actually like that one. He can be wildly inconsistent, so just be aware of that. While Frank Jackson, I just think there are too many guys that have come back here. Now, Jackson was great, and he has been awesome, averaging 27 over the last three. But with Joseph returning, with Grant returning, um, Allington returning, I'm just not certain that Frankie Jackson is going to get enough of uh, a run to, uh, to excite the fan base. Miami. And the San Antonio Spurs. The Heat are listing Bam Adebayo, Jimmy Butler, and Tyler Hero, along with The Undertaker, Dwayne Dedman, as questionable. So lots and lots of uh, rotation changes that could be possible there. For the Spurs, they're all okay outside of Trey Lyle. 7,100 for DeJounte Murray. I like that. I think it's a relatively safe floor with some upside, a 50-point upside for him. While uh, Dragic at 52 has some real value if a couple of those blokes get ruled out, in particular, Tyler Hero. I wouldn't want to use him otherwise. Derek White's at 63, probably a little too high. 84 for DeRozan also smells a little bit. Or Kendrick Nunn at 53, I do like Nunn quite quite significantly at that mark, especially if Jim Butler is out. Now, Butler's at 9,800, and there's absolutely no chance that I want to spend 9,800 on him. While Dunkley Robinson at 55, I would like it if, um, if Hero and Butler are sidelined, and that's it. If Adebayo is out and Deadman plays, I like Deadman and I'd like Achua in that scenario as well. Next game, Memphis and the Clippers. This is a back-to-back -back for the Clippers. So be aware. Now, Kawhi is going to be out. Patrick Beverly is going to be out. And surely, Serge Barker is going to be out. But Paul George might sit out this one as well. And that could give some value. Well, Jaron Jackson, the Spectre, he has been upgraded to questionable. And Dylan Brooks is questionable as well. Valanchunas is out. So the cashier, Xavier Tillman, should get another start. Now, if... Um, if Jackson does play, Tillman's value could be lowered, but I still like it. And De'Anthony Melton, he went off last game. Now, will uh, Taylor Jenkins do something right and play him more minutes? He had 54 DraftKings points. Played 41 minutes, but will Jenkins go back and play him 18? I would be doubtful, but Dylan Brooks was out, and that's why Melton played that much. I would definitely be considering him. Morant dropped a casual 72 last game, which is excellent value. And at 7,200, I still really like that value for him. While Paul George at 93 looks great to me if he does happen to play, which we don't know at this point. Terrence Mann at 45, I would be more interested in that one if George is sidelined. And then Kennard at 37 is an interesting GPP guy. And I do like Reggie Jackson at 56 a little bit there as well. Minnesota and Sacramento, this is a rematch of Tuesday's action. I'm recording this before uh, the end of that game on Tuesday, so I can't tell you who's looking to get back on, on who. But Carl anthony Towns at 10-4. I don't expect Hassan Whiteside's going to slow him down too much. I like 10,000 for De'Aaron Fox. I like. Uh, I don't expect Rashawn Holmes to play, but I, I so I like Whiteside at 62 somewhat. I'm not totally in on that. And I like 7,100 for, uh, for Goose. Anthony Edwards... Rubio, D'Angelo Russell, really hard for me to trust those guys. And Buddy Heald, similarly. And then we go on to the last guy. Actually, by the way, Kings five-point favorites in that one in total, 239. Then the last game of the night is the Denver Nuggets and the Portland Trailblazers. I don't expect Damian Lillard to play in this game, but Yusuf Nurkic will return. No Monty Morris for Denver. So PJ Dozier is an option for me at 3,900. He should get 20 easily in this one. Nurkic will be back. I like him at 5,400. A lot up against his former team. And then Big Chungus is at 11,000. I like Jokic a lot here as well. There is a narrative that Jokic struggles against Portland, which is fo false, um, so I don't buy into that. With Lillard out, McCullum at 8,800. It is high for Siege, for sure, but I think it's worth looking at. And then Maga Porter's at 7,900, which I do think is a, is a pretty solid option against this Blazers team. Aaron Gordon, no interest. Mallow at 43 is interesting if Lillard does happen to be out because they need his shot creation. And then Ennis Cantor at 63. With Nurkic back, it is a little bit tough for me to uh, get too invested into that. If we look right across the slate, the value, I think Looney, Batadze, Doja, Temple, Nurkic, Tillman, Gobert, Westbrook, Bertans, Kyrie, Noel, Towns, Curry, Fox, Clarkson, Melton, Jokic, Morant come in pretty, looking pretty good to me. Guys, don't forget... Hit that notification bell. Give me a thumbs up over here and follow my channel as well in the title, in the description at Josh Lloyd Fantasy Basketball. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. 
Sehr.